Well, happy race day, WTF Sports TV. I'm Joe Ranieri alongside horse handicapper Benny the Boot. We want to go ahead and get you caught up on what's happening today. Big race day, the Arlington Million taking place. Arlington Park, not Texas, but this would be Illinois, Chicago. Is that correct? Or Chicago or somewhere in there? Yeah, it's Chicago. It's the murder capital of the world, but it's it's also one of the very best venues for turf racing. Well, we've got the Arlington Million. It is is a uh, very solid field today. There's, I believe, at last check, five or six horses between three to one and six to one, which means this is going to be a pretty, a pretty good betting race uh, uh, today. Would you agree with that? I think we have one outstanding one, but I think there's value. Uh, underneath that outstanding one. Okay, and today's race too isn't this one of this is has a, a lot of uh, a lot of consequences for the Breeders' Cup. Absolutely, this is a free trip to the Breeders' Cup turf, uh, which is a, a very big race. Yeah, so this is kind of uh, you you win, you're in kind of thing. Yeah, and it also has Eclipse Award uh, nomination. Um, you know venues and and mm-hmm. things like that all right well let's uh let's see we got a field of 11 they're going to go a mile and a quarter and it is the featured race of the day and let's uh let's go through what we've got first and foremost a favorite oscar performance three the one we're looking at a brian lynch trained horse uh, definitely deserving to be the favorite in this race a lot of people don't see him losing it's his race to lose how do you see oscar performance well I, listen he, he jumped off the bench back in june uh at belmont Park and he won the poker stakes in rack, uh, track record time, uh, sparking a, a conversation that he actually could win the division title. I mean, he was really awesome last year, and he's come back uh, looking really good. Mm. Uh, now, if he wins this million as the favorite, uh, this could mark a big move in the right direction for voting purposes at the end of the year. He won the uh, Grade One over the this course uh, uh, last year in the 2017 Secretariat Stakes. Um, I think he's got a really good shot, Mike. Now, I don't like the uh, the post, but I know some people feel that he's he's got to be on the lead or up close. Otherwise, he's, he's, he doesn't have a prayer in this race. That's just his running style. But uh, there's, there's, there's not many in this race that's faster than him anyway. So he's going to be where he wants to be. And I'll tell you the truth, post 11, you're not going to have any traffic down inside. So he'll pick his spots. Well, let's talk about another very interesting horse that people are talking about in the number 10 post uh, uh, Robert Bruce. He is one of three Chad Brown horses that are be are racing in this race. I happen to think he's probably the best of the three Chad Brown horses. He uh, did win the American uh, debut a couple of races back, and he didn't have a great trip in the Manhattan Stakes, uh, but he was uh, beaten only by a length. What do you think of Robert Bruce? I think he's... Uh, a- Definitely second and third choice uh, mm. for me. Uh, I, I, he's going to be in my exactness. Uh, he was, uh, don't forget, this horse is a Chilean horse. And uh, he actually won his first seven starts. Six of them were in Chile. Hmm. Um, so I, I don't know. He, he's you know you can't ever sell Chad Brown short in big races. Hmm. Well, no, that's, you can't. He's got three in this race. Let's talk about uh, the number nine position, Deville uh, or Duval. Deville is it Deville? Uh, yeah, that worked for All me. Right, we'll go Deville. Uh, could the third time be a charm here? We're looking at an Aiden O'Brien trainee that has been third in the Arlington Mill in each of the past uh, two years. Looks like he's still in good form here, and he's got a nice price tag, 6-1 to one so far in the morning odds. Yeah, never sell Aiden O'Brien short. You know, we talk about Bob Baffert and Todd Fletcher and Chad Brown. But when it comes to trainers, Aiden O'Brien is king of Europe. Mm. Uh, and this guy uh, is well-traveled, and uh, his uh, he's been in this thing twice before and finished third, two times out. Um, I, I just don't know if you can't get it done, uh, in Europe and you come over here. Usually you can't get it done here either. So Deval, I think he's going to burn up a lot of money because of the connection with Aiden O'Brien, but uh, he's not going to get my money. Yeah, well, I tell you, he had a chance uh, last year. He was in a position to win last year. He had the rail, but just couldn't get it done. So he's another very interesting choice in this race. We're talking, of course, about the grade one Arlington Million getting ready to take uh, center stage here in the racing world. Big race day. It is a win and 
your in situation for these horses, their owners, their traders, the Breeders' Cup Challenge. Kind of your win and your in is as simple as that. Uh, number eight post, Money Multiplier, another Chad Brown horse. Um, I, listen, he's a lot of people feel this horse. You could run him in the parking lot and he'd show up near the top of the board somewhere. So he's been in this uh, spot before, always seems to perform well. What do you think of Money Multiplier, also a six to one morning line? Well, what I think is I, he's in career best form right now. I mean, he's really doing well. He won the Mamet Stakes back in June. He just missed in the United Nations by a nose. Uh, I think this added distance could really pay big dividends for him. Uh, I'm sure he's going to hit the board someplace. Mm, yeah, well, he's going from uh, off the pace, but doesn't he doesn't win very often. His best races, I think, were in Monmouth. He had a good race, ran second in another grade one uh, in Saratoga last year. This year, he ran seventh at Gulfstream and then ran third in Ontario and had two good races, though, at Monmouth. But he's another one of these horses in this race that you just can't you can't discount, along with the third member of Chad Brown's group he's got running in this race, Almanar. Uh, another six to one shot here. A bit of an unknown. Was in great form last year. Then he missed a lot of time because of an injury. Can he win against this tough field in uh, being coming back from injury and and this being really his first test since that injury? I tell you, this is second off a layoff, off a long layoff. And he's running against maybe uh, the best forces in the world. I just don't think he's ready for tomorrow. You don't think he's uh, he's no? I, I don't think, uh, you know, there's just not enough bottom here. Uh, he did run well last year, but uh, I, I don't, you know, he's not getting my dough. Let's talk about uh, some of the higher odds. Century Dream here coming out of the number five post. Is the turf course soft? Because if it is, Century Dream. Dream definitely has to be considered uh, a, a contender here. He's won seven times in 15 starts. He'll be making his first start in the U.S., but he comes off of two fourth place finishes in big races at Ascot. But I just, I don't know. Can we see him winning in his first trip to the States? Well, first of all, I think it's like cement on the turf out there in Chicago. <laughs> I don't think it's rained in about a month. But at any rate, uh, I agree that this guy, um, he ran two big races at two very big venues in Ascot and Epson. Mm. Uh, he ships here. Uh, he last ran on July 14th. And usually, horses that do quick turnarounds from Europe and come over here, they maintain their form. So uh, this guy, uh, you know, at 10 to 1 morning line, uh, I, I want to put him in my uh, in my exotics. He could be. He's a price horse, definitely, in this race. He's definitely a price horse. Uh, along with spring quality, coming in at the number two post, six-year-old has run only 11 times, including going from 11th to 1st in the Manhattan Stakes in his last outing. Uh, things would have to go crazy, I think, on the front end for him to be able to have a shot in this one. But another big money horse, big price horse here. This guy cost me the pick four last time he ran on Belmont Day he, when he beat Sadler's Joy. <laughs> came from the clouds. Yes. And paid $40 or some crazy number like Graham that. Graham Motion, I believe, is the trainer uh, on this yeah, horse. Graham Motion is, uh, you know, he's he's the turf man, mm. uh, Motion. Uh, I, I think that this six-year-old can run a little bit closer to the pace if he wants. Mm -hmm. But the trouble is... You don't have a good feel for him. He's very inconsistent. You have one really good race, one lousy race, you know. Right. So we don't know how, what spring quality is going to show up. Mm. But at five to one, uh, he's, uh, you know, you could get a very good price on him if he wakes up. Cacho and Die coming out of the number six post, uh, going off 20 to one. He's an Argentinia bred horse. He's won his last time out in the Stars and Stripes at Arlington, but I don't know if he appears to be on the same level as some of these others in a grade one effort here. What do you think? Yeah, he looks like he's a cut below the rest of the field. Yes. Yeah. Along with Circus Couture, 30 to one morning line. He's won nine times in 30 starts overseas and he's hit the board in all but five 
starts, but it's his first race here in the U.S. And again, can we see him doing much here this time around? Uh, a twenty-five to one, uh, I got to pass. He's, yeah. a, he's a risky bet. Yeah, another uh, very high odd horse here. Uh, we'll be in the seventh post. We're talking twenty-four-seven. This is a gelding who's trying to win for the for the home team, but I don't know. It looks way overmatched here at this point. I'm with you. I have no comment, Joe. All right. Well, let's talk about some of the uh, the bets here that we're going to uh, play. Some of the uh, let's talk some of the exotics. Uh, your exact is. What do you think you got going on here? Well, I'm going to first of all, um, I think there's some value in this race. I'm, I'm going to play Oscar performance on top and underneath him I'm going to play Robert Bruce and I'm going to play Divisadero and Spring Quality I, and, and I'm going to throw in a little Century Dream. If you uh, put Oscar performance on top and mm-hmm. the four underneath in the triples, uh, I think you're going to get paid. Alright, I got uh, an exact box here because uh, I think uh, any of these horses can actually win it, but my exact box is going to be Spring Quality, Century Dream, Money Multiplier and Robert Bruce. Dude, look, going for the big one. I think you got to go for the uh, big one over here because yeah. I don't, uh, I don't know. So go big or go it, home. Go big or go home is correct. Also, let's talk uh, real quick. The Secretariat Stakes, a Grade One at Arlington. I think post time five forty eight on Saturday. Uh, let's talk about this race. Give me, uh, give me somebody a name that you think we should uh, keep an eye on in this race. Well, I, I think that the uh, it's a full field of thirteen. By the way, going to the post I, I think analyze it uh coming off of his belmont derby effort uh chad brown and, yeah chad brown mm. and he won that at 10 for long so this is right in his wheelhouse and he also he already beat hunting uh hunting horn and untamed domain mm. last time out so those two are very very good horses and and this is an easy one for me i'm gonna play analyze it i hate to be picking chalk all the mm-hmm. time but I'm going to go and analyze this over the other two, Hunting Horn and Untamed Domain. All right. Well, Hunting Horn, by the way, 7-2 morning line favorite, but his post-13 is is probably going to hurt him in this race. Uh, but I do want to mention Bandua. There's a horse in this race, 20-1 to 1 on the morning line. It's named Bandua. It's trained by Dermot Well. He was going to run in the Belmont, but he decided not to run in the Belmont. Wanted to keep this horse on the grass. He's not bad. He's had two wins in Ireland, and who knows? He's got a pretty good chance here to hit the board, if uh, if nothing else. Uh, well, uh, listen, it's your money. You can yeah. waste it any way you want. <laughs> All right. So listen, there... we, we need to mention one other thing. The, the third race and the other winning you're in is the Beverly D. Okay. Uh, now, that's that's the same thing as the Arlington Million, but it's only for female horses. Mm. And I'll tell you, we got Sister Charlie and Athena uh, are going to run against each other for the first time. And this is this is going to be a really good one. But these are two quality, quality horses. And don't forget, Aidan O'Brien is the trainer of Athena. It's going to be uh, getting a six pound weight break from the rest of the field. Mm. So, uh, listen, I think that uh, those two, uh, if you want to mix and match there, you can maybe make a score. All right, there you go. He is horse handicapper Benny the Booth, the official horse handicapper of the Palm Beach Kennel Club. Keep it here on WTF Sports TV for all the latest sports news, spe- uh, sports betting tips, and of course, sports opinions. That's what we've got here. If you haven't done so already, go ahead, subscribe here to the channel make sure you put us in your favorites and come back it's time to make some money this nfl season we've got plenty of options and opinions on betting the nfl this year you'll have that here on wtf sports tv i made something i